Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about uh, what is Webpack. Uh, in this tutorial series, we're going to discuss what is Webpack, uh, why do you need it, uh, how does it work, how to install it, how to use it for your project. So you're going to get to know everything right from the basic uh, itself. Okay, so if you follow along in the entire series, you will be able to learn Webpack very easily. Uh, so I'll keep it really simple. Okay, so let's discuss what is Webpack. So Webpack is basically an open source JavaScript module bundler. Now the question comes to your mind, what is actually a module? What actually does it bundle? Okay. So in simple words, module refers to small units of independent reusable codes. Okay. So you can imagine that, for example, if you have a large JavaScript file, it becomes really difficult for you to manage it. Uh, so you can break the codes into smaller chunks of p uh, smaller chunks basically so you must have if you worked for any mvc framework uh, you know in fact uh, this is something that is being followed uh, everywhere these days uh, when you are using sas you break your css files into smaller chunks small small files uh, if you are using react then again you make components and you break your code into different parts if you are using web, uh, wordpress you have different template parts in which your code is broken so so that you can reuse it and it's easy for you to manage it okay so so it basically bundles up all your small chunks of files together okay so what is a module bundler? So module bundler lets you write any module format and compile them into a browser. Okay, uh, its main purpose is to bundle JavaScript files for the usage in a browser, and yet it is capable of transforming, bundling, or packaging just about any resources of assets. So not only just JavaScript files, you can also bundle uh, other things also uh, with the help of Webpack. So Webpack basically takes the module dependencies and generates static assets representing those modules okay so it can combine all your dependencies if your project is dependent on different uh, assets it can combine all of it and, and give you a single file okay so i've already explained this part uh, so who's the author now, the author of the webpack is tobias coopers and uh, it is also developed by others and you search webpack you can see that uh, this initial author was Tobias Coopers and is developed by other developers like Sean Lockins, Johannes Ewald etc. So let's uh, understand why do we need a webpack what was the use for it right so to understand it let's discuss how do we actually include our JavaScript files so there are two ways of including a JavaScript file. First, include a JavaScript file in the HTML using the source attribute, uh, using the script tags. And second, uh, use an inline JavaScript in your HTML using script tags like this. So you can see there are, these are the two ways of including the JavaScript files. Okay. And uh, JavaScript is just a script that you run in the browser and JavaScript is taking over the world as a programming language, as a platform and as a way to rapidly develop uh, develop and create fast running applications so so what is the problem let's discuss what are the problems uh, when we are writing javascript file in one file so if we are putting everything in one file the first problem is the variable scoping okay so the variables can leak out into the global scope that's one problem and second is the size and the readability if your file is like uh, really long if you have like uh, 1000 line of code and you're trying to figure out a variable on line 999 that you've defined at line 10 or if your file is like 10000 line of code and, and you are you know looking for something at towards the end of the file that you've defined somewhere in the middle so it becomes really difficult for you to read it or solve any bug etc okay so so what's the solution you know how can we how can we fix this right so before even we get to that we also discuss about using the multiple inline script okay so you must have seen that sometimes we have a lot of javascript file that we include 
and then we just put that uh, in in our uh, index.html file so it impacts your site's performance how does it do it actually is because every time you include a javascript file using script tag then it makes an http request okay uh, and even your css file is as well whenever you are including multiple css files it is making that many css uh, so that many http requests so your site will not be scalable uh, there's only a certain number of scripts requests that a browser can take for example 30 to 50 but sometimes your script is like thousands of modules and you won't have a performance experience by loading so many individual scripts okay so what's the solution of this first thing is ify so i'm sure you must have heard about this ify and must have used this as well uh, so ifies are immediately invoked function expression or we also call it self executing anonymous function okay so that can actually solve the problem so before we discuss about the solutions let's understand how these ify work so I'm assuming you must be uh, aware of the function uh, statement and function expression. So if you just write like this function add number and you do some code over here whatever code you want to write this is basically function statement and the function expression You can write the same function as variable add numbers is equal to function this way. Okay, so this is a function statement and this is a function expression. Uh, one of the key things is that if you do the fun if you write it in this fashion, which is function statement, then you can actually go ahead and call this function before even you declare it however if you are writing a function expression then if you try to call this function over here like add numbers then you know you will get an error it won't work okay so let's discuss this function expression so this is one way to write it but we so then in that case if i want to call it i have to write it over here okay but if you are actually going to call a function only once and there is no point you know putting a function expression and then calling in the second line you can combine this actually so what you can do is you can make it like this and put this entire function so some code here let's say there will be some code here and you can just take this and you put it inside okay in fact let me make it more simpler okay so you see you call this so basically this is equivalent to this right so you remove this and you put that inside and just remove this okay so this becomes your ify okay so what is the benefit of using the ify so benefit of using the ify is that the variable don't leak out out of the function so for example if you define something variable name is equal to or let's say color is equal to red let's get rid of this this was just for information that this is basically the function expression whatever is inside of these two curly braces so, uh, these two round brackets are uh, the function expression okay so let's do this so this will be immediately called so the moment it is defined it is called immediately over here we try to access color outside of this function you shouldn't be able to idly because the scope is of this particular variable is only inside of this function it will not leak out outside so if you check it you can see that color is not defined right it is not available you can't access it because it's inside of this self executing anonymous function okay so in this fashion you can make multiple files and you know you can put the you can use the ifies and you can make a modular pattern and you can put all those codes separately so that your variables don't leak out and you don't have any variable collision okay uh, 
so we can safely combine files without any concern of scope collision using ifies also the problem happens when you load a library like lodash or moment and you are just using one function out of the entire library and you have a lot of unused dead code that you can include in your project so webpack basically gives you the solution to all of this problem okay so what it does it combines all of your dependencies and bundle all your modules into one file which you can then include rather than including multiple files okay so what are the benefits of uh, what are the benefits and features of webpack okay so basically uh, it is first of all supports static async building at build time okay uh, it's incredibly flexible and it can do any custom workflow it has loaders at rescue for non non js resources for example uh, as you know that webpack only would understand javascript in case if you want to include uh, you know if you want to bundle your css files uh, then you can use loaders okay and uh, it is the most performant way to ship javascript today for most performant javascript applications uh, you must know that you also have gulp and grunt as task runners and webpack can combine your dependencies gulp and grunt usually run single task however webpack can run multiple task and combine the dependencies okay so webpack is flexible um, it has loaders for non javascript resources and single webpack configuration across multiple projects when you're you know working with multiple developers this is quite useful and as we discuss it combines all your dependencies okay brilliant so that's pretty much it about the basics of webpack what it is as you now understand it is basically an open source javascript module bundler uh, it combines all of your dependencies and you know brings everything together and just gives you one file so it will be clear more practically in the next uh, set of videos so in the next video we're going to discuss how to install it how to use it and how to actually you know bundle all of your um, different module modular files into one uh, one particular file that you can include in your index.html file okay guys see you then bye bye